So welcome, Nishka. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you, Parul, for inviting me. Well, I have been looking forward to our conversation because we are going to talk about something really interesting. How to finally unstick your expert book ideas and write them down in a book that motivates and inspires. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful topic to discuss. We are going to get into the topic of our choice today. But why don't we start with understanding who Nishka is and what is your story? Well, uh, Nishka is uh, a girl, who, a woman who stays in Bombay, but that's not my story. My story is that uh, I chose writing. I chose writing despite the fact that I was a banker. Uh, I studied finance and uh, I was a banker in a private bank in India. It was long hours, I hated it. And um, I just looked for a way out. And every time uh, I said, I want a way out, Everybody asked me, so what will you do? And I had no clue. I had no clue exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew that this was not what I wanted to do. So, you know, in India, it's like people ask you a lot of questions and then you, before you take a decision, you ask a lot of people a lot of things. So I always stopped myself from just jumping the gun and leaving my job because I was like, what did you do after that? I had no answer to that. So I had my daughter and I said, okay, that's my best excuse to get out of the job right now. So I said, okay, I'm not going to think about what I want to do. In the meantime, for two years, I look after her. So after two years were up, I again started looking for what I want to do. And uh, the only thing I knew I liked doing was write, was not even writing, was reading. And uh, I, used, I could never sleep without reading. I'd read a lot and a lot, I read, a lot of different kinds of books. It was not only fiction. It would be philosophy, it would be economics, it would be anything. You know, it just had to be a book. And then, well, the options were not there because uh, I had done a, I had a finance degree, so I could not get into publishing because at that time, that you, that was the expectation that you have to have a uh, MA in literature. So I started looking for somewhere else to work, and. It's, put the word around where I was that, you know, I'm ready to write for people. And somehow that opened up channels. I got to work, somebody told me, okay, you want to work as a technical writer? I had no idea what a technical writer does. I said, okay, yeah, I'll try it out. So I interned as a technical writer where I was earning like one tenth my salary, but I was like feeling happy that this is what I'm liking. But, and then in, while I was doing that, somebody called me up, can you write a blog post for us? I said, yeah. So I started writing blog posts for them. That was a company. And then they said, okay, can you write um, white papers for us? I said, yeah. By the time I left that job and I started doing this, it was not that it was, it was just exciting enough to try out different things. And then somebody said, you want to write a book for us? I said, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know a book in my name head at that time. I thought, what is a book? You know, it's just a lot of words as compared to a blog post or a white paper. And why I could write those blog posts and white papers was, and they were all in different niches. There was not uh, personal uh, stuff. These were all company corporate related stuff. So I had to learn those different things and different, uh, I had to research a lot and I love doing that too. So when I did all that, I said, okay, so writing a book is also like researching. You know, it's like a white paper where you find out what is good, what is my superpower, and then talk about it and say how I can help you. Because most of the books that came to me at that time were like that. And while doing that again, I didn't choose a niche at all. I just did whatever came my way. And that came my way. And then I wrote those books. I wrote two, three books. And then those books stopped coming and I stopped looking for them. And some other things started coming in. Like I did animation script writing. I did children's storytelling. I did, um, I want, I was contacted by a company, but would you want to learn copywriting because we want copywriters to write for us and we want trained copywriters. So I said, yeah. So they put me through a training for copywriting <laughs> and I joined them. I mean, I was with them. That was the first time when I was with them that I was with other authors, with other not authors, with other writers in the same room. Till then I had always written on my own, sitting in my house. My clients used to come back to me and say, oh, we love the work you do, but 
I was like, yeah, it's okay. But I would always compare myself to the best writers, the writers I read. And I was nowhere close to that, right? And I said, yeah, it's okay. And then when I wrote for that company and uh, with a group of writers, and then the copy I wrote, it was a 20 page copy we used to write, selling financial products. That copy became the best selling copy of the year. <laughs> Thank you. So I was like, okay, I'm good. Now I know that. So again, life changed and I thought I would be with that company for five years. And so, you know, I am, the reason I write books for people I've realized now is that I love learning new things. Now, when I'm in that company and I'm writing for them, after I write the first few months, I'm writing the same kind of thing, the same kind of subject over and over again. I get bored. So, so I said again, now I'll leave again and I'll restart my freelancing, but this time with much more focus and much more confidence. And this I did in 2017. And from there to again, again, I started writing blog posts and white papers and stuff. But then now I have niched totally into book writing. My last book was a book on uh, total quality management by a corporate in which they talk about how they implemented uh, TQM in their huge organization and won a global award. So it has been a very different journey and every step has just led me to something else. What an inspiring story. Thank you so much, Nishka, for sharing that with us. From a banker to a full-time writer and author, somebody who writes books for other people. Thank you so much for sharing that. One thing that I kept hearing when you were sharing your story was, why life kept presenting opportunities to you? Would you write a blog for us? Would you write a book for us? Would you write a white paper for us? You always had the courage and the initiative to say yes to those opportunities. Yeah, um, I know, because somebody else asked me that some time back, and I said, yeah, because it was about writing. You know, it was a niche, something that I felt comfortable in. And if you had told me to do public speaking, I would have <laughs> maybe said a maybe and, you know, seen how it went. But in my heart, I'm always a person who loves jumping. And that's what I say to myself. I say, I've written some posts on that. I said, you know, I spend a lot of time overthinking after some time. And for a long time, I keep on thinking, should I, shouldn't I? What are the things? And I would ask people. And then after some time, like, just chuck it. I'm just going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? You know? Oh, that's one of my favorite questions. What's the worst that can happen? And this whole overthinking, I think when we challenge ourselves with that question, what's the worst that can happen? Most of the times we realize how much drama of our story we are stuck in. Yeah, I, it just happened to me recently. Somebody gave my number to somebody who wanted to write a book. And the first thing they tell me, we want a person who is a well-known author. Mm. I have written for people. I've written seven books, but my name is not on those books. So they wanted a well-known author because they wanted the author's name to show the credibility of the person they're writing about. I said, I've not done that. And so I started feeling, oh God, they'll not call me up and overthinking. And I had to send them a mail. And I spoke to a friend who is a well-known author, right? I said, why did you send it to me? You know, you would have done it yourself. It was, oh, there's that, whatever reason she had. And I'm like, okay. It's not every well-known author who's going to take that opportunity. Yeah. So you, there might be a chance for me. And that just stopped me from overthinking and saying, oh, there's no point in sending a proposal to them because they asked me for a proposal. There's no point in sending anything. I said, just send it. What's the worst that can happen out there? Yeah, yeah. I think that's such a fantastic attitude. And there is so much, all of us and everybody who watches this video can learn from you saying yes to opportunities when they present themselves. So we are going to talk more about you, your story and book writing, but I want to share with you that we have a live audience building up and Leah has joined us from London. Hi Leah, thank you for joining us live. Right, so 
what an inspiring story you have shared with us. There's also a story behind your name, isn't it? So Nishka, <laughs> tell us, what does your beautiful name mean? And tell us the different nuances of, of the meaning of your name. Oh, there are many because my name means honesty. It means truth. But for a long time, we didn't know that. <laughs> my parents just chose the name because they saw a kid called Nishka and they liked that name and they said, okay, that's my daughter's name. And uh, when I was in class six in India, we were studying history and uh, there was a chapter on the Indian history. There was a time in Indian history called the Rig Vedic age that was like eons ago. And when the Vedas were written, so at that time, there was a currency called Nishka. So that was the first time I knew, okay, my name is more than just somebody else's name picked up because that time nobody had Google to check what your name means, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, then later I found out, you know, talking to other people that my name actually means honesty and truth. And there's a story behind it also because I met my husband who searched this name, or the meaning of this name. And he is, he's a coin collector. So the first meaning of the name I gave him was that it's the name of a coin in the ring. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> and yet Shakespeare wrote, what's there in a name? Yeah. <laughs> How interesting. So, so your name means it's, it's a currency. It, it stands for honesty. It stands for the truth. How beautiful. How beautiful. Mm. And you Thank chose you. to share your truth through your passion, which is writing. Yes, and the more I write, the easier it becomes to share. Uh, I know in the beginning when I started writing for people, it was very, very hard for me to share my stories. And when I started unlocking their stories for them, and somehow I started unlocking my stories too, and I started sharing them. And that's led to a lot of uh, deep awareness about a lot of things, about the reactions I give to things and the storylines I make around things. And that's what we all do, right? We hear something and we will just make a storyline around it, whereas the actual thing will be something else. And this has led me to look beyond the obvious reason, what I think as the obvious reason. Yeah. Yeah, so true, so true. Mm -hmm. So Nishka, how about we dig into the topic that we have chosen for today and learn a bit of book writing from you. So tell us, how do you help people with, well, what can we do to finally unstick our expert book ideas and write them down in a book that is going to inspire the readers? That's a lovely question because you know what, I created a process for my ghostwriting. And when I started talking about that process that I have for ghostwriting, I realized that that process can be used by any writer when they're using it for themselves also. So there's a four step process that I do for my authors when I ghostwrite for them. The first step is discussion. Why do I discuss? Because I have to get into that author's mind to understand their story and to see it from their point of view. And how will that help another writer write? So often when these, my authors would come to me, they had a structure in their head. They said, this is my learning. This is what I want to talk about in my book. And these are the chapters and these are the ideas that I want to talk about. When I started questioning them, I realized there's so much more to it. I started asking them, you know, why? Whom do they want to connect to? What is the story? What is the story behind the story? Because what happens often is when writers want to share their story, but they don't want to share their vulnerability or their authenticity. They want to share the wow stories and the, okay, and even if they'll talk about what happened that was wrong or the missteps they took, they will not go into that into detail. They will not talk about this, the wrong steps. And that is the crux of your story because your reader is also struggling with those same points. Your reader is struggling with those ideas. So when you start thinking about writing your book and you come up with a fair structure in your book, just leave it there. Just write it down. Leave it there. Yeah. And start thinking about your, your life. 
the stories you can share about, you know, it can be the smallest things. It can be the way you decided, you know, took decisions as a kid versus you are taking now. So how, what has changed in you? You have to go deeper into yourself to find out your stories. So what I tell people is when they start doing this process is to keep asking a lot of why questions, a lot of questions about how do I do this? Why do I think like this? Why would I see the, the path ahead? And why could the other person not see it? What was different in me? And often they will find it would be something that either it is in, inherent in them that they would always see it, or somebody has taught them something. They have heard something in their childhood or while growing up. There's some things they've learned and they've imbibed in, in themselves. So these are your stories. These are stories of you, your origin stories. You have to start collecting them. You might not use all of them, but just start collecting them. And once you start collecting them, and then you see your structure or you see your process and see it, how it works. Another thing that happens is when you start looking at these stories, the idea of your process also deepens. Because what happens is when you start looking at these stories that you had and the things that you're planning to tell other people what to do, you can see certain linkages there. You can sense a deeper clarity in what you want to write. And writing itself brings deeper clarity. You can say a lot of things, but when you start writing down, if it's not clear, you would leave it half full. You would just drop your pen and you say, oh no, I can't write it. And that's a problem of the mindset and because and why it happens because of lack of clarity and a need for perfection so those are two things you have to combat as a writer to do that first you start writing down your stories and if you can't write them down record them i mean anywhere just write the easiest way you have to record your stories just do that then give yourself the chance to just go through them, sit with them for some time, and your structure will develop from there, right? Uh, and another thing I've seen, especially in business leaders and coaches when they want to write their book, the thing is, there are a lot of business leaders who have said the same thing. There are almost 2,000 books written on sales every year, yes? So often people think, oh, it's already been said before, or they say, okay, I like that book, that author has absolutely got the idea that I share with my clients. So why don't you write from there, take those points and write. Okay. So what I say to these people is that that's not the way to write your book. You can take an idea from there, but the way you talk to your audience will be your own way, the way you explain it. And when you take your stories and put them in those points, or you take your stories, you will find more points. You will find more ways to express it. So, you have to start thinking for it and you have to start ideating on that. And it starts with you, with your ideas. So always, always look back at things you have learned and the obstacles that blocked you, the people who helped you, the things that were done that were wrong, the missteps you took, because that is one way of Finding your ideas, that is also one way of finding your readers. Because your reader is usually a past version of you. Absolutely. Right? That's, you're just showing them the path. So there has to be something in you that you have walked those two, three runs ahead of them and you can show them. Mm. So that is... I want to share one book about when I talk about perfection. I said clarity is the first point, and the second point is perfection. All writers expect perfection. And we have, you know, those movies they used to show where a man with a pipe in his mouth starts writing on the typewriter <laughs> and the story unfolds. Like you see, the whole story is a three hour movie. And in the end, the typewriter, the, the whole manuscript is around next to him. And he goes to a publisher and it's published and it's done in three hours. The book is written and it is a success. And he's found a publisher also. And he's found a wife through the story. Yeah. So <laughs> everything happens. <laughs> but that's not life, right? And that's not writing either. Writing 
most writers say that writing the first draft is the writer telling himself or herself the story. And it is in rewrites that we finally find the story. Now, uh, when you look perfection in your chapters and start writing and saying, my first chapter, my first Tara is also not perfect. I would not read it. It's so boring. It's so dull. It's, I'm not getting it like that. My author gets it. Don't do that. That author has gone through many rewrites. And that author's journey, this might not be the first book he's written or she's written. This might be the 10th book they've written. So you have to keep talking to, your, to yourself while you're writing. Because writing is such a... Um, process. You can talk about perfection. Can you? Yeah. Um, I I think you're back now. Yes. Let's carry on. So we were talking okay. about, it might have been the 10th book that they have written. So, so when it's, it's not a good idea for us to compare ourselves to those authors who we admire. Yes, it's not the right thing because I'm comparing my beginning to somebody's middle. And that's not the same thing. And I want to show you this book. I love this book. It's called Hyperbole and a Half. And this author has written about her journey in depression. And this is her drawing of her. And this is her dog. And she wrote the journals. If I draw, you know, you know, look at them, you would many times people say, oh, it's not well illustrated. And this book became a bestseller because it came from her heart. So this is not beautiful illustrations. These are not beautiful drawings, but this book to the audience. So when you write, and when you write with authenticity, when you write your stories and really share them and share your missteps, share your problems, share what you went wrong, where you went wrong, that's when you connect to people. So when you talk to me about successes or not, when you connect to people. Yes. So, yeah. yeah what we, we are saying here is it is the vulnerability that we share in our story yeah. that is going to help us connect with our audience. Right. Okay. Can you hear so, me now? Yeah. Yes. So, clarity and uh, clarity is the first step. Let's not try and be perfect. Let's start where we are. Let us give ourselves permission to be vulnerable because that's what creates connection with the audience and not just the successes. And then you come to understanding who is your target audience. Yeah. Because like I had a client, I also coach people on writing. So I had a client who was in learning and development and she was in corporate and she wanted to start her own, write her own books and because she wanted to get into consultancy. Yeah. When she just came to me with the idea of, learning development, she knew so much. It became a deterrent for her because she says, oh, I can, the book can help uh, trainers like me. It can help students. It can help their parents. It can help so many people. I said, then you cannot write a book like that because it'll be so vast. And if you write for trainers, you will have to use a certain lingo. When you write for parents, you write a certain way to tell them, oh, okay, I know how to help your child. Or if you don't help a child, you have to write a certain way to get that child's attention. So you have to find your audience and see where it works the best. And for that, you have to research. One, you go with a gut feel, okay, I will write for trainers, fine. And look at Amazon, look at other book places. What are the books that are selling in learning and development? What are the stories they're talking about? What are the things they're sharing? And then you'll come to know which audience you would like to go for. Another thing that helps is, like she herself told me, she said a colleague of hers who was even more learned, he wrote a book a few years ago. She says, even I find it difficult to go through that book. 
it is so heavy. There is so much information. Yeah. And that's it. So we cannot share too much, but we have to share whatever we share, share it authentically, share everything in that. But you have to understand how much your audience can take at this stage. I like to talk about Simon Sinek right now because his first book was um, The Power of Why. The second book was Finding Your Why. He could have made it all into one book. He didn't because the power of why was a concept that he wanted people to understand and grasp in totality. So he made a whole book just about the power of why. And in the second book, he tells you how and how you find your why in greater detail. He's touched upon it in his first book, but he made it a greater detail in the second book. So you can't share everything you know in one book. Be aware of your audience, be aware of how they are reading. And that also makes us more aware of what kind of readings do they do? Do they like audio books more? Do they like, with, you know, so while you're doing that research, don't stop yourself from writing, but you will keep your eyes and mind open on what ways, different ways you can publish your book. And where do they meet? Where do their audience meet so that you can talk about your book to your audience? Mm. So essentially what I hear is, we have got to share our stories. And I love when you said they are our stories, collect them. We have got to collect our stories, otherwise they'll be lost. We've got to do that, but we have got to share those stories, keeping in mind who our audience is. And we cannot speak to everybody at the same time. And that's a common uh, advertising knowledge that, you know, uh, if you're speaking to everybody, you're speaking to nobody. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be very specific. Writing has taught me to be specific for my audience, for my authors. But when I do it for myself, it's a task. I have to keep on thinking, okay, whom I'm talking to. And I have to keep on, you know, after every two, three years, I will decide on, okay, now I'm talking to these people. Earlier I spoke to these. So the more you work and the more you write, the idea will develop. But you cannot start with no idea at all. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I also love when you said there's no need to put everything we know in just one book. And Simon Sinek's example is so amazing because he has done two books on why. Can I give you an example of how I saw and have been lucky to participate in, in this concept recently? Yeah. So we have another person who has just joined us live and she is Carolyn from Singapore. And Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. And Carolyn is putting together a series of books, which are and a series. And what mm -hmm. she has done is this is so beautifully organized concept that she has taken one emotion at a time and created a book around it. So we have had anxiety in us. We have had anger in us. We have had fear in us. We have had sadness in us. And there are going to be more books that are going to come in. And the idea is to help people navigate these life emotions. Now, yes, there was an opportunity that all of these emotions could have been jammed into one or two books, but that's not how she chose to do it. So I think it is, it is aligned to what you are saying. Take, take a concept, do it really well, and then pick up the next concept and do it really well in a different book because everything doesn't need to be jammed in one single book. Right. Another author that I know and I really follow him, uh, Matthew Pollard, because he writes for introverts. He's chosen a specific niche for, for introverts. And his first book was called The Introvert's Edge. And it was all about sales and how an introvert is good at sales. Because you're an introvert, and this is something you've been taught completely different. And how you can excel at it, right? And what skills does an introvert have and how to use them? Now there are, again, I said 2,000 sales books written every year. He has made a niche in that. It's on introverts. That's his niche. And the second book came out uh, this year. It was uh, The Introvert's Edge to, to Networking. You can imagine an introvert at a networking event. <laughs> this is absolutely, I go, I am great at talking one on one to people, but put me in front of a group and I'll go, hmm. So somebody gave me an idea that, you know, you should do a course. I said, yeah, I'll do a course. Well, I'll do, you know, I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. 
And somebody said, you should do group mentoring. That's a lovely idea. It took me a long while to wrap my head around it. I created a course and I'm going to talk about it uh, in December, I will launch it. But I'm going to do it my way. I cannot do it the extroverts way. I cannot do a challenge and get people in because I cannot do that. I cannot talk five days in a row to people every day. It's not me. And it will drain me totally. So you have to find what works for you. And what works for you works for your readers. Yeah. Again. Yeah, that is so important to understand. Figure out what works for you and whatever works for you is going to work for your readers because, as you said, our clients are the versions of who we were a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. Thank you. And be as specific as you can. That's, that's why I gave uh, Matthew's example. He's been so specific. He said, whenever, I, so people tell him like, you're talking about sales, right? It's just a sales work. He said, no, it's sales for introverts. It's networking for introverts. And it really makes sense. It can be used by extroverts. There's nothing that cannot be used, but an introvert will find it easier to use. And for me, if you tell me to use an extrovert method, that would be what and introduce myself to every person in the room. I will just squeeze myself into a corner and stand there the whole day and not move. Right? So then he speaks to us and how to, um, you know, create how to walk a room or how to create a script and prepare yourself on what you want to say because that would help me I would I need to know what I'm going to say because otherwise I would either blubber incoherently or I would just stare and not know what to say so true so, so true right and you can help and the same way like the person I help with learning and development, she can write the book for different audiences because she can see exactly what that audience needs. When she's talking to a parent, she will talk to the parent's anxiety about their child's learning and how to improve their learning. And when she talks to a, a trainer, they will talk about different things and she can get really a lot more jargon than that. And industry studies, which would not make any sense to the parent at this stage, or they would need to be toned down and explained more to the parent. Yes. So you will have to see that. Yeah. So it's again understanding who our audience is and meeting them where they are. Exactly. Mm. Clarity, no perfection, understand your audience and understand your market. And market study is the same as audience study in a different way. So market study is what we did earlier. We checked Amazon and went everywhere, to, you know, yeah. the bookstores to check what is there. An audience study, you can check the demographic, okay? Check the psychographics. What inspires, whether are those, how that audience reacts to how they, what are their emotions? What are those things that, is, that your, your audience feels? Because I recently spoke, and when you spoke about Carolyn and the series she's doing. Uh, I've, I'm creating a blog series and this came as an idea when I read somebody's uh, post on a Facebook group on author journeys. So I'm interviewing different authors on their author journeys. And every author's journey is so different. And every author finds success in different things. So many authors who I spoke to were not Kindle best bestsellers. And their books are not sold worldwide. Um, I mean, they don't have so much of an audience, but that book has helped them launch coaching careers, has helped them start consultancies, has helped them reach out and talk, or talk to people in speaking gigs. So you have to choose what your vision for your book is and then write for that. Because um, you can choose any vision that works for you, and, and you can choose that as your vision for the book, but please don't choose to be, be a bestseller. That's not a vision you can accomplish till Lady Lux smiles on you and a lot of things, you know, happen synchronously around you. Yes, that can be a dream, but that should not be the vision for your book because you cannot control it. You cannot manage it. 
the best thing for you to do is when you're starting on a book journey and what business leaders and uh, coaches, the reason they want to write a book is to build authority, is to build visibility, yeah. is to get more clients, right? So try to make your book as helpful as possible. And there's another thing, make yourself reachable through the book. What do you mean? May add bonuses to your book. You know, in the first three chapters, if you, you know, buy this book, you get to book a free call with me. You get to come to talk to me on strategy. I can do a free, two, three free sessions with you because you bought this book. Click on this link. You can get some download templates. You will join a newsletter. So you getting people into your world in the first two, three chapters, you don't have to wait for them to read the entire book for them to come into your world. Make your book speak for you and be your call to action. I love that. I didn't do that in my first book because, yeah. because my first, first book was the first thing outside working the corporate world. So I hadn't really set up my business until then. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I had no idea how to write a book or how to sell it. So, so yes, this call to action. But what you said is so powerful. If you can include your audience, if they can become part of your world, not just as a reader, but as an active participant on your journey, it's going to be so much more amazing. Yes. Yes. And that's why um, one thing I talk about quite often to my authors when I talk when we start writing, is that what are you doing to build your author platform? And that sometimes makes authors feel a lot of overwhelm and feel that, oh, I can't do this because, oh, I have to be on, on social media, I have to be on podcasts, I have to be everywhere. Nobody said that. And that was a reason when I was trying to talk to authors and I should get that pushback every time, I said, no, that's not the truth. You don't have to be everywhere. That's why I started collecting these stories of people who became good authors, who became well-known names in their professions, but didn't start by doing everything in one go. To show that, yes, you can do it because you do it your way and you do it step by step. You have to start somewhere, right? And you can't do everything. You're not a superman or superwoman, or you're not going to, you don't have a team with you. And in the beginning, it's better not to have a team working for you because you need to talk. Your voice needs to be heard and how you're addressing your audience needs to be heard. So all those things are very important. So you have to think about your voice, your stories, and start talking about what you plan to write about. If you can do that before you start writing, well and good. If you start talking about it after you write, perfect. Whatever works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Hmm. And there's nothing like there is too much, you're sharing too much. So uh, especially if you're a coach or, um, you know, if you share your tricks, if you share the things you know, I read about this coach who used to write email templates, right? He told email strategy. He said, I would go into a meeting and give my entire set of templates in the meeting to the people. And after that meeting, after that networking meeting, people would still contact me and say, can you do this for us? He says, it's not difficult. I've given them the tools, I've shown them everything. But they want me to do it because they know they don't have the time and they don't have that interest right now in doing that. They choose me to do it because they see that I'm an expert. And that's the best way to build your expertise is to keep sharing your expertise. Yeah, yeah. You remind me of a conversation I was having yesterday. I was in a sales coaching call and uh, the coach that... Uh, the coach who was running the call, who was conducting that call said two things. One was don't try and be on every platform. Start with one platform, understand it really well and, and master it. That's, that was essentially the, the message they gave, which is very similar to what you said. Don't try and be everywhere. Don't try and do all the things. Start with one thing. And the second thing that they were talking about was at one point they said, okay, so I'm giving away my biggest secret to you and now you can go ahead and do it yourself. And I said, 
nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not interested in doing this. And that's the reason why, <laughs> why I have you. You will do it for me. So you can tell me your secret. I listen to it, <laughs> but you will do it for me. <laughs> and it was such a, such a nice moment for us because, because we were talking about you can never share too much. And he was telling us, go ahead and, and share whatever you want through content that only establishes your credibility and people will still come to you. And, and it was when he said, I'm giving away my secret sauce, my biggest secret. And when I threw back and said, ah, I'm not going to implement it, you will do it. It was such a live demonstration of that concept. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> yes, and it happens all the time. And we think, you know, we are holding on to this knowledge. And if I share it, people will not come to me. You know what? The best authors, what they do, they share snippets of their ideas, of their book pages on, uh, on social media. And people still go and buy their books. Yeah. Uh, if you remember ages ago, I think Charles uh, Dickens' books, many of them were serialized in newspapers first, and then they became books. So mm. people would buy it. Still. People would buy it because they don't have the time or the energy or the inclination to put in those hundreds of hours and, and put together that okay. information. Yes. People would still prefer it in a better bound way, in a different look. Uh, there's another author, um, I'm forgetting his name. He wrote a book on selling again, on sales. And the first book he wrote was a success. And he, it was a well-written book. The second time what he did, he made that book an illustrated version of that book. And he got a good illustrator to each point. It's just illustrated them. Of course, there's a lot of writing still, but those are visual. So yes, some of your audience will be visual. You can cater to them. People will buy that book again because it's visual. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there is a there's a section of audience who will listen to your books. So that's where audiobooks come into picture. Yes, yes. Mm. The same book can do a lot of things for you. But first, to unstick your ideas, you have to start writing them down and building your clarity. And only when you build your clarity will the structure evolve. And one hint I'll give you about the structure, especially if it's an expert book, talk more about the why. Mm -hmm. Build the story in the why. Build the, the reason if it does not, if the person does not apply these things I'm going to talk about, how it will affect them in their life, in their business. Build the why story, make it resonate. Tell, share your story about how when you did not have this, what happened? Or maybe your friend didn't know these tricks, what happened? They lost a job, whatever. Build that story, talk about those emotions. We yep. connect at an emotional level. We buy at an emotional level. Logic is what we say that we buy on, but we buy based on emotions and we trust based on emotions. Yeah. So when you build your why story as the strongest story, your audience will already be sold on the how. Mm. And most expert authors, what they do, they want to tell their how to the world first. They said, I'll tell you how to do this. It's okay, I will read the book, but the book will lie on the side because I will not implement it because it's not affected me. It's not made me feel that, oh, if I don't do this, I will lose a million dollar contract. I might just end up sabotaging my own business. I might do so many negative things if I don't do this. And that why has to bring that out. So always start with your why which ties into what you were saying earlier, have, have a vision for your book. Right. So what is the vision usually is to get more clients. And mm -hmm. how will you get your clients? Like somebody else told me, like, uh, to get speaking gigs, you need a book. Now that kind of book, I don't know, um, you can also do a lead generation book. You don't need to be into a deep end, 250 page a book. That's the kind of books yeah. I'm talking about here. You can do a shorter book in that also but then you have to see will it get your get their attention or would you need to write something else you'll have to see the people you want to attract how will it attract them yeah 
Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This was such, such a mindful of wonderful information. Thank you so much, Nishka. Oh, you're most welcome. Tell us how can people work with you? Do you have something coming up? How can they experience some of this goodness with you? I am a book coach and a ghostwriter. I call myself an ideology uh, empath because I help my authors build their ideology by listening to their stories and their complex ideas. And I say, okay, those are the stories. Let's build an ideology framework. And I'm an empath because when I start listening to my authors, I become their biggest cheerleader. It might be a niche I've never heard about, like total quality management. I wrote a book about it recently, but when I was with them and I was listening to the stories, I was like, oh yes. And then how do you do this? Because it just seemed the most important thing in the world. And because I could put myself in their possession and think from their angle, that's what I do. I compete by seeing like that. So yes, you know, that's how I help people. One, by writing books for them. One, by mentoring them. And you can reach me at nishkarights.com. That's my website. You can also contact me at nishka at nishkarights.com. That's my email ID. And I'm, I have a free masterclass coming up on 23rd June. It's on creating an author platform. Oh. And how do we, yeah. <laughs> these stories I'm collecting, they are mind blowing. And these stories are collecting much later. I mean, the amount of wealth of information these people have, plus the way I work with my earlier seven authors and I've seen them build their author platforms, there's so much you can do, which is not salesy which it just speaks to you and your audience and you can do it on your own. And this is all that I'll be talking about in that one hour session. I will uh, share the link to the mastermind in the comments below. And it's on 23rd June, I think it's uh, 4.30 p.m. BST. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. so next Wednesday. Brilliant. Nishka, before we let you go, what is one big message that you would like to share with our audience today? Share your stories. Share the world stories. needs to know. As a young mom, I would look at Discovery Channel and I would see all those baby giraffes dropping off from their moms and then walking in two minutes flat and I'm still holding my baby. I said, why have we human beings not evolved to that level that we can you know, really start working from word go. But if you share your stories, you will help others evolve faster and that will help them. Mm. And when somebody talks about sharing their stories, I have to agree because, because I'm so passionate about sharing stories. Nishka, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed our time together today. Thank you, Parra. I love the way you asked me the questions. You got it all out of me. Thank you, Nishka. It's been a pleasure.